two wings, they covered and with two wings, they did fly. And Isaiah said that his spirit shook the foundation of the earth. And so tonight, I challenge you to worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Oh, come, let us worship him. Let's worship him. Good morning, Ebenezer. 
good morning to those of you here in the sanctuary, but and especially a good morning to all of those that might be worshiping with us on the social media platforms. We certainly welcome you into the sanctuary this morning, those that are here, and into this worship experience. God is a good God. He allowed us to awaken this morning, put it on our hearts, and we should come to the house of worship, and we should be eternally grateful for that, along with the many other blessings that, uh, that we can't even speak because we're not aware of how much the Lord really does bless us every moment of every day. So it's good to be here. Let's acknowledge the Lord with a hand, hand of praise this morning just to, just, to be, just to let the Lord know that we appreciate him. This is, a hand, this is praise unto the Lord this morning because the scripture says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Again, to each and every one of you, thank you for being here. God will richly bless you for your presence and your participation. Let's stand for the invocation. And as we're preparing for the invocation, we will acknowledge the dismissal of children uh, to the EBC Children Church, EBC Fellowship Hall. We're watching our future church as they uh, depart the sanctuary. Bless their hearts. There's one more there. Two more. Bless your heart. Little Joe and Sadie. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us bow our heads. Most gracious and all wise God, that has in our dwelling place for all generations. Before the mountains were born, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Lord God, we just acknowledge your presence this morning. We thank you for your presence, and we feel your presence because there's a special degree of love we feel this morning that's moving from heart to heart and breast to breast. And we know, dear Lord, that it's only you that, that can garner that kind of love among your people. And we pray, dear Lord Jesus, that you just allow us to continue in your name. Help us, Lord, to continue always lift up your name in praise. For we know, dear Lord, that nothing could be without you being in our lives and we're just especially grateful this morning that uh, that we were taught at an early age that that God is in control and that he will provide for us as we move from one good degree of grace to another we thank you dear Lord for we realize master that it's through your power that we live and exist and have our being in this world Thank you, dear Lord, for the bright sunshine this morning and in the springtime of, of this, this year. We acknowledge your, your power in the flowers and the green grass and all of the bounty of nature because we feel your power. We recognize your power and we know that it's through your grace and mercy that we continue as we do. Now, dear Lord, we just thank you, too, for the many bountiful and wonderful blessings that you give us from day to day. And we pray, dear Master, that you would always help us to understand the purpose for which you came. And that purpose was to bring salvation to all of mankind. And our purpose, dear Lord, our purpose, sinful as we may be, is to lift up the name of Jesus so that those who know thee not in the pardoning of their sins would come running and saying, what must I to be saved? Therewith, dear Lord, we'll have an opportunity to bring them to the throne of grace so that, um, they, that, that their hearts can be made right, their, that their emotions could be filled with your grace and mercy. Now, dear Lord, we just thank you again for the blessed opportunity to worship this morning. This is our prayer in the mighty, magnificent name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. We'll now have a musical selection uh, from the media department. Oh 
The gospel train is coming, coming around to me. The Lord God said that he's coming back. But one thing he didn't say when y'all go away. Get your houses in order. You see the Lord is coming again, but one thing I know. Without another word, Mrs. Mills is on the job. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to those who are joining us on our YouTube platform and welcome to those who are um, joining us here in the sanctuary. It is indeed a pleasure to stand here before you this morning and welcome you into our service. Um, I do have one card to read. It says, thank you. There are not enough words to fully express our heartfelt gratitude for the sympathy, love, and support you have extended to our family during this time of loss. Um, Ebenezer Baptist Church and Deaconess, thank you for the lovely card. It gave us great comfort during this time. We truly appreciate our church family. This comes from Brenda and Granville Braxton. So before I continue with the announcements this morning, Sister June Bates and Sister Gloria Bates both have announcements they'd like to make. If you will come now, please. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I'd like to mention that the Women's Fellowship uh, will be working tomorrow if we get enough volunteers today, but whether we do or we don't, we will be. Uh, the extra packages that we had for the homeless children, I finally caught up with the other person and we were able to come up with a date to deliver those items. Those items will be packaged again tomorrow and all also delivered tomorrow. They will be going to Project Hope, which is with the Charlottesville High School, and they will distribute those items for us. So if you have an hour tomorrow, that would be great. I'm sure it won't take any longer than 45 minutes to an hour. Thank you. Good morning, Ebenezer. Forgive the voice, but it's that time of the year with allergies, so you know how it can be. But uh, the Yes Ministry, before we had came and presented and pastor prayed for our shirts, these are some really nice shirts. Um, and we're going to be selling our leftovers. Uh, we have uh, the short sleeve shirts, which will be $10, and the long sleeve shirts, which will be $12. And these uh, shirts, they actually have uh, moisture wicking capability. So if you're a sweater like me, it'll wick away that sweat. So, 
also. And then finally, just as another um, announcement, the youth will be going to the Harlem Globetrotters on this Tuesday. So if you have not uh, donated and would like to, feel free to contribute today to support that trip. Thank you. So today, immediately following service, um, beloved community Charlottesville will have a presentation that will take place um, in the fellowship hall. Um, this will be a short presentation immediately following service. And our EBC missionary will be having a meeting also immediately following service, and that will take place here in the sanctuary. On Saturday, April the 20th, our EBC praise choir will be having rehearsal here at 10 a.m. On May the 11th, we're having our um, women's breakfast. So our, our assignment or project for the women's breakfast um, will be to have, for each member to present an influential person in their life. That can be a family member, um, a teacher, um, someone in the Bible, but just um, we're going to do a short presentation for someone that has been an influential person in your life. And that will take place at our women's fellowship breakfast on May the 11th. For those who are interested in going um, to First Bethel in August, the trip is August 24th and 25th. You can see Sister Swift to sign up, but there's also information in the vestibule uh, about the hotel as the hotel name um, rates and uh, location. So that will be available in the vestibule. Our ushers are selling tickets. Um, so you can see any usher, and they're selling raffle tickets to support the usher's scholarship fund. Um, we know we've had EBC members who have benefited from the scholarship, so we're asking you to support in whatever way that you can. And then for our last announcement on, excuse me, Sunday the 28th, our own Pastor Bates will be preaching at 3 p.m. at Chapman Brook. Chapman Grove um, for their afternoon um, service. So if anyone would like to come out and support them for their um, uh, service, at us at 3 p.m. at Chapman Grove Baptist Church. So that will conclude our announcements of this morning. And as always, I ask that you consult your bulletin for all of these and other upcoming announcements if you need any further details. Thank you. Good morning, Ebenezer. Good morning, Ebenezer. For the Lord is good. Oh, come on, let's get some praise up in here. I said the Lord is good. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask Sister Nashe if she'll play something softly. As you can see in the bulletin, um, in 2019, uh, as a result of the passing of our own pet, Caleb, we, I believe it was that next Sunday, we were certainly mourning the loss of our pet and realized that uh, those of you that had pets as well and have understood the passing of a pet because the pet, um, we started an annual event known as Pet Remembrance Day or Pet Remembrance Observance. And every year since that time, you were asked, uh, for those of you who had pets, um, and lost pets that uh, if you would like to memorialize your pet in the bulletin to send us a photo with some type of caption, which many, some of you have done. Uh, we make that request every year and we certainly uh, are looking forward to adding to the list of those that you see in the bulletin because I know that there are many uh, of you who have experienced that type of loss. But for just a couple of moments, we want to do what we have been doing now for the last several years. So for those of you uh, that, again, have experienced the loss of a pet, will you please come up? And what you're going to do is what we have done last uh, in the past several years. You'll give your name. You'll certainly give the name of your pet and certainly what type of pet that is. We will perform a memorial prayer and just have a couple of moments of silence and then we will proceed from there. So if you can move now, please. Uh, you do not have to be in the bulletin to participate. If you have lost any pet, your pet doesn't have to be a dog. If it's any type of pet, certainly we want to uh, give you the opportunity to 
take these sacred moments um, and to just acknowledge and allow us to give honor uh, as you recognize the loss of your pet. Now, again, if we can just kind of even it out, all right, everybody can, you know, so we've got an overload over here. So if we can just move, uh, move to my left, move up the aisle if we need to, and just kind of even it out. And uh, Deacon Miller already knows what I was going to ask him to do. So he is ready. Now, Shay, if I'm going to need you to give power to this um, other mic. And uh, as uh, Brother Miller is providing guidance, we're just going to go right down the line. Again, we want you to give your name. We want you to give the name of your pet. We want you to share what type of pet you have. And uh, then we will proceed from there. All right. And so I understand that that mic is ready. And so we're going to uh, begin with Sister Jocelyn, and then we're just going to go right down the line. Jocelyn Bell, um, Coco Chanel Bell, um, Pekingese. Valida and Benny Page, Senator Page. <laughs> we're celebrating 20 years of him not being with us. He'll never be replaced. See. Water Collie. Thank you. Judy and Bill Pointer. Carter Park Pointer. Beagle. Now, those who know me know I love animals, especially dogs. And I can't believe I forgot and um, didn't submit my most recent loss on this list. But it's all right. Um, I lost Baron many years ago. He was a Doberman Pinscher. Noni, a Pekingese cross Japanese papillon, Simba, a boxer, and my most recent loss, Koa, a cross between a Rhodesian Ridgeback and American Pit Bull Terrier. Um, my name is Esther. We had our pet was um, Marie Josephine Mills, and she was a Pomeranian Chow mix. June Bates and Maya and I had a boxer named Ali. Joseph Kraft Jr. lost my cat. Uh, her name was Mia Kraft. Uh, she was a tabby, a uh, black and white, black and gray, excuse me, black and gray tabby. Nancy Key, um, we had a, her name was Rage, and my son named her, I didn't, he did. So she became my dog when he left home. So she was a half collie and shepherd. Randy Washington, I've had a few. So I had Ebony, Newfoundland, I had Hannibal, uh, Hannibal a Karen Terrier, a uh, Bullet, um, Cox Spaniel, and there's a few more, but I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Francine Ford, like you said, we had a few. Pork chop was a German Shepherd. Piper was a chow. And oh no, I can't remember. Oh, Turbo, which was a um, hound. Brenda Braxton, I had Lucky, and he passed 12 years ago. He was a Shih Tzu Shepherd mix. I know, those two breeds. <laughs> Gloria and Lehman Bates. Um, we had a black Labrador retriever named Caleb Red Bates. My little dog was Coco. She was 14 years old. I've had her since she was six weeks and she passed of breast cancer a year ago. I had a um, Chihuahua. Her name was Mad Miss Madison Girl and she died in 2019. Tony Williams Carter. I had a Cocker Spaniel Poodle Mix, which was Snoop, and Nashe Carter, and Tony Carter had a rabbit called Spanky. Amen. Uh, uh, the Miller family has Bell, uh, shown in the bulletin. It's a Yorkshire Terrier, uh, and um, still very much alive, but we do love him dearly. Shall we all stand 
And I'm going to ask those who are standing to turn and face pastor. Shall we all stand? We're going to offer a prayer of remembrance for all who have experienced the loss of a pet. Shall we pray? Father Jesus name. We thank you, God, for this moment. This is a personal moment, especially for those of us who have experienced the love of a pet, the devotion of a pet the faithfulness of that, the years of just having them with us, being a part of their lives, them being a part of our lives. And right now in the name of Jesus in this solemn moment, oh God, we just again give remembrance. For Father, you do all things well. And the reason why I say that is because in your creative power, you decided to create a pet. You didn't have to do it. And not only did you create a pet, you created so many different animals. And thank you, Lord, just for allowing us the privilege and opportunity. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you comfort these families, comfort these individuals, because even though they're gone, they are still with us. We thank you and we praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say, amen. Thank you very much. I want you to remain standing because we're going to move right into our meet and greet. Amen. For those of you that are at the altar, if you want to return to your seats. But this is meet and greet time. You've got 90 seconds. Come on, let's fist bump someone. Amen. And let's change the temperature in the place. Praise the Lord. All right, everyone, as we return to our seats and as we ask the media committee to begin playing softly, we're going to move right into our tithe and sacred offering. While you are preparing for that, um, I do want to enlist the help of uh, our ushers who are uh, on the job today. We thank God for our ushers. The church say amen. I want to make sure that everybody is... Uh, aware that uh, we do have in the foyer, uh, along with much of uh, much information, uh, we do have this emergency preparedness guide. Now, for those of you that may have picked up this guide earlier, you know, maybe several years ago, uh, this is an updated version. And I do want to make sure that it is in everyone's hands, at least those hands of those who are desirous. And so I know that there are some in the back foyer table uh, thank you, ushers, for getting those packets. Raise your hand because actually I'm going to be referring to this during my sermon today as well. Um, this is a very interesting little packet and certainly something that is appropriate uh, for the times that we are living in today as we are seeing an increase of uh, weather tragedies and the like. Uh, please, my hope is that you take this information, not just read it, but certainly use it to your benefit. Um, again, I'm going to ask the media committee, please pro, uh, play something softly as we move into our uh, tithe and offering period. Uh, one other thing, uh, I'm not going to certainly try to reread all the announcements. Uh, Sister Esther has done that adequately, uh, but I do want to do make mention that, uh, all right, so, uh, if I can get an usher to as um, uh, their own. Uh, you may have noticed uh, on the table, those of you that walked in, um, there has been continuing discussion between our church and First Bethel. Uh, because of their location, 
we wanted to find a uh, hotel that was near to the church facility. And so this is the hotel that is being uh, selected. Again, you don't have to use this hotel. We're just trying to aid and assist those of you that may be going up on Saturday uh, for that particular event. And of course, we're talking about the event that's in August, uh, where we're going to be worshiping with First Bethel in Maryland for their homecoming. Please keep these and all the other announcements in mind. At this time, we're going to now move into our tithe and sacred offering period. I'm going to ask those who are assisting pastor, if you will please uh, hold the baskets. Uh, today is the last day that we are asking those of you uh, who would be so kind to donate to our upcoming event on this Tuesday. I want to recognize the uh, tithes of Sister Dorothy Williams and Sister Sonny, uh, Brother Sonny Williams. Sorry, Sonny, I know you're listening to me. Amen. And we do want to say praise the Lord for them because they watch us every Sunday as well as many of our other sick and shut in. Let your say amen. All right. At that being said, let us now uh, come and let us bring our tithes as unto the Lord. For Malachi chapter 3 verses 9 and 10 reminds us of our obligation to God. While you are coming, um, I do also want to note that uh, for those of you that are interested in the foyer, there are additional copies of the homegoing program of our uh, recently departed Chairman Emeritus, Kenneth Page. I believe there's some copies left for those who would like a copy. And then also uh, in the foyer, there are extra masks that are available uh, that are engraved with the church name. Uh, we want to make those available to you as well. All right, I just received a note. Uh, this is actually a note from my wife. She wanted to mention that those of you that are considering coming tomorrow to volunteer. Uh, if you would please come at 9 a.m. I believe they're going to start at 9 a.m. sharp. And uh, as she mentioned, uh, it should not take long at all. Shall we stand now as we receive our gifts? Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on this day. We thank you for all of your mercies because your mercies are unfailing. We thank you that even though there are many examples of instability and chaos in this world, we have a peace that passes all understanding because we know who's in control. Right now, in Jesus' name, oh God, we ask that you receive these gifts, sanctify, bless these gifts, and use these very glory in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Let everyone say, Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. In just a moment, the media committee was, was going to provide us with a preparatory interlude. At this time, however, I want you to turn your attention to the Old Testament book of Amos. Amos chapter number seven. There are actually going to be two passages in Amos. I'm going to take intentional time this morning because it's important that we understand the context behind this particular message today. So I'm going to begin with reading uh, Amos chapter 7, and then I'm going to read certain verses in Amos chapter 5, which will provide the foundation for the message today. For those of you that are taking notes, I'm going to use a very familiar theme that is applicable for uh, the times that we are living in. And uh, the theme or the title of the message today is in the form of question, who are you going to call? You have heard that uh, before uh, used in uh, 
earlier sermons in the past year. But as we have now heard of uh, the weather tragedies and all of the unusual events that have occurred since this past Monday, and many of you remembering that Monday was of uh, the experience of the total solar eclipse. At the time, there were those of us who had very clear opinions as to what we believed that eclipse represented. And what Pastor did, if you remember on last Sunday, was remind all of us that we can praise God for the eclipse because it was not something that man could do. God is speaking now. And it is in that vein and it is in that measure we offer to you on today, Amos chapter number seven. Now, as I read this, um, I'm going to ask for just a little latitude because again, I want you to understand the context behind this particular passage. So there may be just some brief commentary as I am reading this particular text. I'm going to start with Amos chapter number seven and I'm going to start with verse number 10, right? Follow along with me, please, as Pastor reads. It says in verse number 10 of chapter 7 of the book of Amos, Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos, who is a prophet, have conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all of his words. For Amos says, you, Jeroboam, shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led captive out of their own land. Also, Amaziah, who is the priest, said unto Amos the prophet, O thou seer, go, flee away unto the land of Judah, and there eat bread, and prophesy there. But, verse number 13, prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. Now, let me move to Amos chapter number five. And after this reading, we're going to give way to our media committee. This passage is Amos chapter five, verses four through six. It says, for thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, seek ye me and ye shall live. But seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, nor pass not into Beersheba, for Gilgal, shall surely go into captivity and Bethel shall come to naught. Seek the Lord and ye shall live. Yes, ye break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it and there be none to quench it in Bethel. Thus ends the reading of these selected passages of scripture. At this time, we're going to ask the media committee to provide us with a preparatory musical interlude.
Bow your heads, close your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amos chapter number five, verse number four. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, seek ye me and ye shall live. But seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal. And pass not unto Beersheba, for Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. Who are you going to call? I'm going to begin this message by referring uh, each of you to the packet that I referred to earlier. Uh, this, again, is an emergency preparedness guide. Um, I do want to thank the uh, Charlottesville Sheriff's Office, Sheriff James Brown, and also uh, Brother Al Anderson for uh, providing these copies for us. Let's church say amen. amen. In this particular preparedness guide, I was just per uh, perusing through it. Um, again, it's a handy little guide for those of us who believe that we know what time it is. And uh, on the front, as you can see, emergency preparedness guide, what to do when disaster threatens. And when you turn inside to the first page, and I'm just gonna read this uh, briefly, the question is why prepare for disaster? And then it responds by saying, disaster can strike without warning forcing you to go for days without basic necessities or to evacuate your home. And then it capsulizes and summarizes uh, the context by just saying this one sentence, you need to be prepared. Let the church say amen. amen. My brothers and sisters, on this last Sunday when pastor stood here, we stood here in the shadow of the event that occurred on this past Monday. We shared with you that, again, it was a opportunity. It was a call. Some of us believe that this was God's way of getting our attention. Well, guess what? Monday has come and gone. And I find it interesting that we are noticing all of these numerous and frequent weather tragedies. And of course, not just the tragedies, because again, I'm not, uh, I don't take note of what we hear during the news, but I always want to know what the news is not reporting. If you remember, one of the things that I mentioned was uh, many of the unusual occurrences uh, one of those occurrences dealt with the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, which, again, uh, our Bible students, we studied those many years ago, just thought it was interesting that the man who created what was known as the Higgs boson particle, the God particle, he died on that very day. Now, again, conspiracy or coincidental, that's your choice. 
But what is evident is on yesterday, uh, it is now official that the country of Iran has now begun attacking Israel. Many years ago, many months ago, we talked about the prospect of there being what was called World War III. We mentioned that the escalation, if there was going to be continued killings of women and children and the innocent, at some juncture, people are going to pick on you to the point where you're going to decide you're not going to be picked on anymore. Have I got some help up in here? I don't know what your position is about the Israeli Palestinian. called to be a prophet. But what he was, was he was someone who was used by God when there was no other voice available. Are y'all hearing me today? Maybe you'll get it when I remembered or reminded you that when I did the reading of the passage of scripture, and let's go to that right now. In chapter number seven of Amos, it was important that I provide you with that context first for you to be able to understand the words of the prophet in chapter five. Because in chapter seven, there was a scene. That scene was one where you had a man by the name of Amaziah. Amaziah was a priest, say priest. That, that means he was a preacher, he was a pastor. He was a so-called man of God who goes to the king of the country, the head of government, and says that the prophet of God is speaking ill about you. Now, that should have given you some cause to wonder. It should have given you cause to scratch your head. But my brothers and sisters, those of you that are students of the word, you know that when Israel, when God's people are not following God's word, there's normally several reasons why. One is because the leadership is corrupt. The priests are corrupt. And when the priests are corrupt, then God sends prophets. Are y'all hearing me today? And so that's why you, don't, you should never get caught up in titles. You should never get caught up in someone's title, being a pastor or being a preacher, because it's not the title, it's the testimony. Am I right about it? God didn't have a priest that could speak his word. And so God had to go out into the countryside. He had to go out into farmland and pick a faithful common man to prophesy his word. And his name was Amos. Go with me to this text because it's right here in chapter number seven, where we see a scene where the priest of Bethel, let me stop right there because, again, if for those of you that can easily be deceived, because, again, as you know, the word Bethel means house of God. This is the man of God who is overseeing the house of God. He is leading people who are following him because they feel that if they are following him, they are following God. And that's why, my brothers and sisters, I, I tell you right now, you better have your own relationship with God. I mean, now, even Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If I'm not following the Lord, please don't follow me. Have your own relationship 
with him. Because in the final analysis, what the pastor inevitably does is only confirm what God has already told you. So that when you get up in the morning and you pray to him and you say, Lord, I thank you for another day. And then when you make the request of the Lord, Lord, give me this day my daily bread. Well, then that's when the pastor comes in, because, again, sometimes when the Lord tells you something, sometimes there are times where, God, you don't understand what the Lord has to say. You say, well, Lord, I need a confirmation. I need someone to just confirm that what I heard from you is true. And what God will do is he will send his manservant or he will send someone who is in your network to let you know that you have heard from the Lord. Am I right about it? Because sometimes when God tells us things, sometimes we get we scratch our head because we say, Lord, are you sure that's what you want us to do? Have you ever had that happen to you? And so right now, that's why, because we're in a land of corruption, don't listen to every voice that comes your way. Make sure that you test the spirit by the spirit and know that it's of God. Back to the text, we see the priest of the house of Bethel telling the king that the prophet of God is speaking ill to you. It may be true, but he's speaking ill. And so look at what he also does. After he speaks to the king, then he speaks to the prophet. He says, now prophet, he says, look, I don't have any issue with you. As a matter of fact, I kind of like you. My problem is, is that I have to admit, I have sold out to the king because the king has offered me riches. The king has offered me position. I, 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 I gave up my testimony to please the king. And so because this is really not about you, I just want to warn you that the words that you are speaking, the king does not like them. And so don't prophesy anymore at Bethel. And let me tell you the reason why, because Bethel has been sold out to the king. It is the king's court and it is the king's chapel. My brothers and sisters, that's why you should not get upset over what is happening in many of our churches today. Regrettably, some of our churches have sold out. They've sold out to the world. Its leadership has sold out. But my brothers and sisters, that's the bad news. Can I give you some good news? The good news is that there are still some men of God that love his name. There are still some men of God who will not compromise the gospel. They're not perfect. They're not holy or pristine, but they are faithful even in their flaws to know that God will give grace and will give mercy as long as you remain faithful. Let the church say amen. And so uh, today, what needs to be understood is this. In the midst of what is happening right now, in the midst of what has happened on yesterday, in the midst of the escalation that is getting ready to occur, and now that we have a point of reference, because we know what happened with COVID, we knew how that changed our lives, changed our lifestyles, changed our ability to go and come caused us to think at life differently and caused us to reprioritize that life. If you think it happened at COVID, what do you think is going to happen now? And so right now, the word is this, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because when disaster comes, when emergencies come, the question is, who are you going to call? And so chapter number five gives us that and gives us a let me last a couple of minutes because this is your word today. You need now ask the answer the question who it is that you're going to call. Verse number four of chapter five tells us what we need to do. It says the prophet says, seek the Lord and you shall live. I'm going to say that again. Seek the Lord and ye shall live. Now, that is what this is all about. It's all about living. 
not just existing, living. There are those of you right now, you want to live a long life. I particularly do not want to live a long life. I do not want my life to have quantity. I want my life to have quality. And my brothers and sisters, we don't know how long this world is going to be until it descends into total chaos. We may have one year, two years, or five years left. But the question is, what are you going to do with the time that you have left? And so right now, here's the answer for you. You came to the house of the Lord. You said, preacher, I need a word from the Lord because I'm dealing with family issues. I'm dealing with job issues. I'm listening to all of this stuff that's happening in the news. It's starting to affect my community. Collateral things are happening around me. And even though I'm trying to do the right thing, guess what? There are others who are not doing the right thing. I could be driving down the street, obeying the traffic laws, stopping at every red light and proceeding with every green. And that doesn't mean that I'll get to my destination. Am I right about it? And so what do you do? Well, again, chapter number five and verse number four. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, seek ye me and ye shall live. How many of you want to live today? How many of you want a life of quality? How many of you want to have a life of purpose and satisfaction and realize that you were put in this world to do more than just look cute, to do more than just have a famous address or to have a Rolodex of friends? How many of you want to be used by the Lord for the Lord's purpose so that the Lord can be glorified? If you're in the camp, then I've got good news for you today. This is what he tells us to do. Verse number four, seek ye me and ye shall live. Let's go to verse number five, however, because this is what helps us open our eyes. As you're seeking me, don't seek the things that represent me. I'm going to say that again. When you seek me, don't seek the things that represent me me because those things are now corrupt it's right here verse number five don't seek Bethel don't seek the house of God why because I told you in chapter number seven the house of God has sold over it is no longer the house of God it is now the king's chapel. Now, y'all looking at me crazy. I'm just giving you the word. In this particular passage of scripture, what needs to be understood is this. Don't just look at the content. Look at the context. Israel at this particular time, when you go back to chapter one, verse number one, Amos was called as a prophet during the times of King Uzziah and also King Jeroboam. And those who were students of Bible, you know that back at that time, those kings were military strategists. They were the so-called Sun Tzu's of their day. They were able to get Israel the victory. But my brothers and sisters, there is a danger that comes with victory. Because when you become victorious, then you become prosperous. When you become prosperous, then you start to lax, become lazy and lackadaisical. And what happened was they began to, they stopped praying to the God of Israel and they start praising their pleasures and their riches. And how do you know? How do you know if a leader has gone astray? Well, it tells it. It tells the fact that you have neglected the poor. And everywhere in scripture, when God is displeased with leadership, it always seems to come to that. Leadership gets so high and high minded. They get the big head. They win victories and forget about the Lord that gave them the victories. And then what ends up happening is that they have 
they have parties in the palace and there's music playing, but there is distressing in the streets. And for those of you that think that America is not under judgment, there are some of you right now, you might be in your palaces of parties, but guess what? There is crying in the streets. And God is not pleased. And so when 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 the danger comes to your door, when the emergency comes to your door, when 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 the when the tragedy comes to your door, who are you gonna call? You're not gonna be able to call Ebenezer. You may call me, but I can only do but so much. You better call on the God of Israel, the one who made you, the one who created you. The one who can order your steps to know the one that knows what's going on before you even know what's going on. Call on him. And I guarantee you, you will get what it is that you need. And why is this important today? Because, again, we don't know what's going to happen now. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen next week. We don't even know what's going to happen today. But what we do know is this, for those of you that know the word of the Lord, uh, this is your time right now, because since you don't have tomorrow promised, is there anybody wants to praise him now? <laughs> Can you thank him for another day? <laughs> Can you thank him for your life? Uh, can you thank him for what he has done for you? Uh, can you thank him for the fact that you have good health and sound mind and, and, and food on the table and clothes on your back and roof over your head? I can go down a list of reasons why we should praise his name. And so, my friends, as I close the day, the word is simple. The question today is this. Who are you going to call? Who are you going to call when disaster strikes who you want to call when an emergency strikes don't look at the house of Bethel don't look for those things that represent God because God is showing us that those things are now corrupt don't seek the thing have a relationship with me because it's in this same pasture as I close it's in the same pasture that says the Lord will do nothing but what he does is he reveals his secret to the prophets. I'm going to say that one more time. He won't do anything, but when he reveals his secret, he's not going to do it to the priests. He's not going to do it to the church building. He's going to give his secret to the prophets. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Stand on your feet. The doors of the church are open today. This particular message, it may not be a message of praise, it's a message of prophecy because we are getting ready to experience what the Lord has already prophesied. And that's why the song says this way, be sure and very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your prophecy. Thank you, Lord, that you are getting our attention. No longer can we brush aside the weather tragedies and the news reports and the wars that are escalating. No longer can we brush it aside. It is happening almost on our doorstep now. But Father, in the name of Jesus, let us do like the old folk did. They sent up their timber early. And they realized that if I praise him now, I'll be able to praise him tomorrow. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the ability to praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We give you praise right now. We say that if we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't praise you enough. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, help us to answer the question that has been posed today. That question is this, who are we going to call? Because when trouble comes, many of us have already found out if we call on 911, they're not going to respond. If we call on law enforcement, that doesn't mean they're going to respond. But we have the blessed assurance to know that if we call on you, you will respond. Go with us now. Stand by us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We pray. Let everyone say. Amen. The doors of the church are open. There's always the opportunity and possibility that there's one that wants to know Christ. 
as the music plays, we want to provide you with that opportunity. While that is taking place, I do want to give instruction because we're going to give the benediction in just a minute. And then for those of you, and we really want to encourage those of you to stay because they have a wonderful presentation downstairs. Um, they have several presentations, but one in particular uh, deals with the history and memorialization and legacy of Ebenezer. And I do want to thank Sister Elizabeth Solu along with Bernadette and Nashe for putting this video together. And I guarantee you it will be well worth your time if you do go downstairs. I'm going to certainly also ask those committees who are meeting, please do it uh, promptly. And we're going to start all of this in just a couple of minutes. So as soon as the benediction is over, we're going to ask if you will please depart the sanctuary uh, so that we will tend to the various businesses at hand. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the question. Help us to provide the right answer. For when the question is asked, who are we going to call? The answer should be this. I will call on the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Go with us now. Stand by us. And now unto him was able to keep us from falling the all wise God. Be Lord, dominion, majesty and power. Now, henceforth and forevermore. Let everyone say amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you.